side by generation upon generation of these dinosaurs. The nests are so close together that the females could not walk between them. We think that they laid their eggs on the edge of the site and just walked away. The earth of the dinosaurs is familiar, yet different. It was warmer than today. Oh. Deserts were widespread. For a great part of the dinosaur era, there were no broadleaf trees and no flower-bearing plants. Dinosaur era, there is no Arctic ice cap and Antarctica is subtropical. For tens of millions of years, seasons barely change. The water of the oceans is also much warmer. Hurricanes are frequent. The magnetic pole changes position continuously. Many times a modern compass would have pointed east, west, or south. When dinosaurs appear, the nearby stars are in radically different positions. The moon is closer and the tides have more amplitude. The earth spins faster and thus the year has 385 days. <laughs> Professor Korea has contributed to the discovery of more than a dozen new dinosaurs. As a scientist, he insists that each new find is important no matter how big or small. The journey to discovery is as rewarding to him as the discovery itself. And sometimes he says what plays the biggest part is simply not in our hands. I like to think that I am lucky, just incredibly lucky. Lucky to work in Patagonia, and lucky to have been there at the right time with the right knowledge. Many paleontological discoveries are not made by professionals. That's what happened with the Argentinosaur and it happened again with yet another dinosaur. Dr. Leonardo Salgado is a smart colleague and friend of mine. He and I were notified of the presence of fossil bones not far from my museum. We organized a field expedition and started to dig up more bones. They were relatively big, so at first we thought that they belonged to a herbivore because in general these dinosaurs tend to be larger. But instead, the bones proved to be those of a predator, a very large one. Professor Correa's team had unveiled the first species of a group of fierce predators called the Giganotosaur. The first Giganotosaur in A appeared 100 million years ago. The three species in this group surpassed the famous T Rex in terms of size. Although rare for reptiles, Caring for the young has been observed, among crocodiles, for instance. In dinosaurs, this caring behavior evolved enough to remind us of birds.
This baby female is named Longtooth. However small, vulnerable, and some cute she may appear now. She is genetically programmed to rapidly become a 45 foot long, 8 ton predator like her mother. In Patagonia, why did it happen that way in that place? It's a question I've heard countless times. And as a matter of fact, I keep asking myself the same question. There's no easy answer. It could be because 120 million years ago, South America separated from Africa and became an isolated world. Evolution followed a number of particular paths. However, it's more complex than that. A dry climate with colder nights could have favored animals that retained their internal heat better because of their larger mass. But a simpler interpretation rests on a warm climate and a fertile land with all the vegetation you can eat. Yet another theory tells us that large herbivores had to grow big enough to accommodate the large stomach required to digest high in fiber, low in protein vegetation. Finally, large spans of flat space could have led naturally to Argentinosaurus, as the vast seas have led to whales. its advantages. The highest branches belong to those who can reach them, and many predators are too small to be threatening in most situations. Strong one is now about 10 years old. He has reached a length of 60 feet, half his adult size. With rapid growth will give him the protection of size early in life. Argentinosaurus hard to attack. A herd of Argentinosaurus is even more so. And such a herd has to move constantly because it eats a lot and has to find new or regrown food sources. <laughs> Longtooth has reached a quarter of her adult size. 
She's growing fast, too. Her primitive feathers have almost all disappeared. She has been feeding on just about any small animal and even some vegetation. between meals, but this time they won't have to. reptiles reach their apogee with the Quetzalcoatlus, a pterosaur as wide as a small plane. No flying bird will ever get as big, not even close. From flight, this reptile has nothing in common with birds, and evolution gave it nothing to survive the impending dramatic events. Several factors could have contributed to the demise of dinosaurs. Mammals became bigger and more competitive. Drifting, isolated continents touched each other. New rivalries appeared. New diseases spread. The climate was growing colder, possibly because of increased volcanic activity.
five million years before the end of the dinosaur era, the volcanoes of the world became much more active. The air was unbreathable in many places. Vegetation suffered from this. One of those so familiar long necked, four legged herbivores. We named it Argentinosaurus. This discovery had a profound effect on the way we look at South American dinosaurs. On a personal level, well, it took a big, big place in my life, to say the least. creature on land. Yet it starts its life in eggs just a little bigger than grapefruits. Scientists believe that female Argentina is a blue whale, the largest animal living today, if he lives long enough. <laughs> Predators and hazards abound. Only a few will reach adulthood. Actually, one of the most important discoveries I've been associated with is an extremely large nesting ground. It helped us to learn a lot about the reproductive behavior of titanosaurs. This site is known as Aucama Huevo. It covers more than 15 miles and is the museum I work for is very active. Many doctoral students come to pursue their research. Sometimes younger people like my daughter in Milan just come to satisfy their curiosity. I love talking about dinosaurs with everyone, whether they are experts or not. It's a busy life, and it would have been plenty for most people. But early in my career, new horizons opened up for me. Things became much larger than life. A rancher has stumbled upon a surprisingly large bone. My mentor, the great Argentinian paleontologist Dr. Jose Bonaparte, immediately saw that this bone surpassed all the dinosaur bones he had seen. To some extent, velociraptors, gigantosaurs, and tyrannosaurs. Unilagios had feathers, but didn't fly. Big dinosaurs need space. This is the Carmen Funes Museum, which also happens to be my second home. We still know so little about dinosaurs. Paleontology is just beginning to discover the universe. Sometimes, as a joke, we say that it's a science filled with holes. We have only found about 700 species of dinosaurs on the whole planet. This isn't many for a reign that lasted 180 million years. 10% of these dinosaurs were found in Argentina, most of them in the last 30 years. Through technology, our knowledge grows faster every day, but dinosaurs are only found by people who are walking the earth.
Fossilization is a process that requires extremely rare conditions. And even then, very little of an organism is preserved. We could easily conclude that a tremendous number of species just disappeared without a trace. Because there is so much missing, your imagination can really run wild. Of course, science fiction can be fun, but you also need to be very careful before proposing a new way of looking at dinosaurs. Like so many of my colleagues, I wish I could travel in time to see these amazing creatures alive. Strong one has reached maturity. For many scientists, he's at full size. He's 20 years old. And he is at the beginning of more than a century of life. Other scientists believe that he will keep on growing all of his life at a much slower pace than in his earlier years. Argentinosaurs were 12 times more massive than their biggest predator. They were almost invincible. Here in El Chocon, 100 million years ago, the normally fleeting footprints of a few dinosaurs have become eternal through fossilization. These traces speak abundantly about the creatures that left them. They give us details about speed and size. They tell us if the animal was walking on two legs or four, if they were alone or in a group, if they were wandering, hunting, or being hunted. Dinosaur footprints are found on all continents. But the trackway layout in El Chocon is invaluable. The patterns clearly show associations between contemporary species, and this is very rare. The discovery of the Giganotosaur has given Rodolfo Correa his world-class reputation in paleontology. His passion for his work remains undiminished, despite it being most of the time very demanding. His work is intimately linked to nature. It's infinitely varied terrains and ever-changing climate. So there are hardships, but there are moments, sometimes, when science just blends with the pure bliss of being outside in wonderful places. Years in the field have taught me an essential lesson. After all this time, dealing simultaneously with the life of the ancient past, and that of the present time, all life has become meaningful to me. My scientific work has shaped my whole way of thinking. This is prospecting at its simplest. You just look around, but finding requires a trained eye. With time, you realize that the number of questions grows faster than the number of answers. Patience and perseverance are mandatory virtues. They help with especially puzzling enigmas. For instance, we wondered whether theropods such as giganotosaurs hunted alone or in packs. Again, like many times before, a good hint at an answer came unexpectedly we found a new species in the group of Giganotosaurs. In fact, we didn't find just one specimen, but a jumble of bones belonging to at least seven individuals. For me and my Canadian colleague Phil Curry, this was pointing at something we had considered but had no evidence for until then. 
large meat-eating dinosaurs, such as Giganotosaurus, could hunt in packs. So Longtooth belongs to this new species of Giganotosaurus. She is, to be precise, a Matthewsaurus. And at 22 years of age, she is fully grown. Strong One is, unknowingly, in a critical time. As an adult Argentinosaur, he has no predator to fear. Unless he is too old or sick or wounded. 